have any breasts, you ought to be praising God. Because that is an enemy that does not only come to try and destroy women. They have found out in recent years it's also an enemy that comes to destroy men. So the Bible says, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. I say, let everything that has breath, give God the glory that that cancer will not come into you. I know, I know it sounds funny, but I don't mean it that way. I, I really do not mean it that way. Please, please hear me. I'm not trying to be funny up here or anything, but we have a, a, one of the most precious ladies that I know, and maybe Sunday she'll share a little bit of it, and that's a Debbie and she'll tell you what it's like to battle breast cancer, but she'll tell you what it's like to believe God by faith and beat it in the name of Jesus. I said she beat it in the name of Jesus. So you need to, uh, you, need any, you, you know anybody that's struggling in that area, you need to hurry up and bring them to church and, 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 and we'll let people pray over them. I'm going to continue today in my series, Victory Believing. How does faith come? Because the, the, the word of God is very, is very plain, but it really stressing that the just shall live by faith. But let me tell you who the just is. A lot of people don't understand who the just are. Who are the just that the Bible is talking about? The just are those that before Christ were guilty because of their sins. But when they received Christ, Jesus forgave them or justified them of their sins. And so they're not guilty anymore. Is there anybody like that here besides me? Six of us, okay? The rest of you, the rest of you aren't forgiven yet. You're still walking in your sin, right? Or are you forgiven? Okay, so how many justified people do I have in the house? Listen, I may sound adamant, but you've got to understand this. The enemy will attack you. You will become a target of the enemy. And if you don't have faith in the word of God, and if you don't have faith in what God has said is yours, you'll fall prey of the enemy. And, and, and I, I don't think you understand... The reason, look at me, please. The reason, and I, and I humbly say this to you, the reason that I stand here before you is because of God's mercy and God's grace. But I did something with the mercy and grace. I believed it and I received it. That didn't go over very well. There's a lot of people that, are, that talk about mercy and talk about grace. But they, but they don't apply it to their lives. That's the only reason I stand before you. Is God has extended grace towards my life. And he extended mercy towards my life. And I believed it. And I made it mine. When did God do this? When his son Jesus Christ shed that blood. His precious blood on that cross. He gave mercy for all of us. He gave grace for all of us. But I had to hear it and believe it because faith comes by hearing and I applied it to my life and by faith in God's mercy and God's grace, here I stand before you. And if the truth be known, here we stand before, before each other because of that principle. The love of God, I'll get to my teaching in a minute. This is part of the teaching, it should be. The love of God will mean nothing to you or it will not mean what it should mean to you without the understanding of grace and mercy. Without the understanding of grace and mercy, the love of God will mean nothing to you. It'll sound good to you and it'll give you the goosebumps for that night. By the next morning, you'll wake up and it'll mean nothing to you. Now, when you talk about grace and mercy, the reason they're so phenomenal 
is because the mercies of God are new every morning. Hallelujah. Every morning you can get up and walk on fresh mercy. Every morning you can get up and walk and, and bathe in it and bask in it and give thanks. Mercy is, the wages of sin is death. Say that. How many of you know what wages are? That's what you get paid every week, right? Wages. Say the wages of sin is death. Now say this, but thank God. Say it again. Say thank God I didn't take the check. You know what that is? That's mercy. That's mercy. And it is in, in that mercy. It is in that mercy and in that grace that you extend your faith. Because if not, you'll continue to walk. And you'll be, you, as you continue to. To live, you'll become your own worst enemy. You'll feel so guilty about everything, as you should. You should feel guilty without Christ. But when Christ came into your life, therefore there is now, therefore, no condemnation to those that are in Christ. And those that have been called according to his will and his purpose. But it takes faith to walk that way. It takes faith to walk that way. It takes faith to walk that way. I'm going to keep saying it because I like the way it sounds. It takes faith to walk that way. 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 And that's why after God, after everything that God has done for us and given us his own only begotten son, to die on that cross for us, God has put one rule to that. And he says, because of all of that, the just have to live by what my son did for them. Amen. The just shall live by faith. And I'm, I want to challenge you tonight. That's the reason, thus this teaching, now, I want you to know that I love to teach this because I grew up in this. This is what I grew up in. This is normal to me. This just flows out of me, and I give God the glory because I grew up in this word. But not only did I grow up in it, to this day, I still live by it. Oh, come on, somebody. To this day, I did not only grow up in it, I live by it. The word of faith became alive to me when I realized how much I was guilty of and how much God has forgiven me of. Faith became alive to me. And when I read that those that God has justified shall live by faith, from that day on I said, I will not live by any other way than by faith. And by the grace of God, I continue to do that only because God honors it. Not because I'm so such a superhuman, it's not has anything. Now I am handsome, but that has nothing to do with it. No, it's all by the grace and by the mercy of God. I believe God has this love for everybody, but I believe that something attracts God. There's something that in the life of those that walk by faith that attracts God. Now, let's go. Let's go to the opening scriptures in Habakkuk. Now, notice this. Read it with me. What does verse 4 say? Come on, a little bit louder. Who's the just? Say, I am. I like that. Say, I am. What does uh, verse 11 say? Come on, church. What does verse 11 say? If you're on your phones or anything, get off those things and get your eyes on the word of God. 
What does verse 11 say, please? What is, let's go to the next two. What does Romans 1.17 say? When shall they live by faith? Now. Right now, folks. And some of you are going to miss some of the greatest things that God wants to do in your life because you're not in the now. You're in yesterday. And it doesn't say tomorrow, yesterday the just shall live by faith. It says right now the just shall live by faith. But here's what happens. People get stuck in, they get so comfortable in yesterday because, I mean, after all, yesterday doesn't, isn't too bad. I, it's a good place. I, I feel good where I am. And they get stuck in yesterday. And they forget that God wants to take you from faith to faith, from glory to glory. God wants to take you from realm to another realm to another realm to another realm. But he cannot because you're stuck in yesterday. You're not operating in now. Some of you got to get out of yesterday and jump into the realm of now. Now the Lord is a present help in trouble right now. He was yesterday, he is now, and he'll be tomorrow. But you, I mean, uh, yeah, to, but you can't get into tomorrow because you're not experiencing now. It took yesterday to get you into now, and it's going to take now to get you into tomorrow. But you can't operate tomorrow in the, in the degree of faith that you operate it now. It's going to take a greater faith tomorrow than it did today. And you have greater faith today than you did yesterday. That's the way God operates. From faith to faith, glory to glory. Now, if you feel good and you're stuck in yesterday and you feel good, listen to me. Let me warn you about something. You need to be aware of the fact that good is the enemy of best. Now, the reason God didn't leave you in yesterday, because it was better in now. And the reason you're not going to stay in now, because the best is tomorrow. God always wants the best for you. But people are stuck in yesterday. Thank you. I think I'm teaching better than you're. Leading me to believe I am. You're so gracious. Do you understand this? I'm glad you're here tonight. I want to thank you for coming to class tonight. We've come to learn something. Can you say amen? amen. Now would you agree with me that if the Bible tells you four times... The same thing over and over again, four times. Do you believe that's, that's important to God? Yes. Now, do you believe it's really important to God? Yes. Do you believe it's very important to God? Yes. I believe so too. I, as a matter of fact, I believe it is very significant to God and to the things of God and to the things that God wants to do for us that it doesn't tell us once, he doesn't tell us twice. He tells us four times that now the just shall live by faith. What does Romans 1.17 say again? Now the just shall live by faith. When? Now. Now. What does verse 38 say? Now the just shall live by faith. Again? Now the just shall live by faith. When? Now. Right now. And if you haven't lived by faith, start right now. Somebody, that's a good word. Give the Lord a praise. God has given us, God is extending to us grace and mercy and the ability that if we haven't done it before, we can do it right now. Amen. Aren't you excited about that? Aren't you excited about living by faith? Well, let me tell you something about faith though. People will laugh at you. And people will mock you. And people will persecute you. Why? Because people might walk up to me and say, so how are you today, Pastor? I'm healed. <sighs> you don't sound healed. I don't care how I sound. The Word of God says I'm healed, and I walk by what the Word of God says. That's my faith. Somebody say, that's my faith. <clears throat> I only cough because I like to cough. 
by faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The just shall live by faith. And some people might laugh at me. Doesn't matter. I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it because I'm receiving my healing. I can't serve God and, <clears throat> and do everything he's called me to do when I'm sick. Can't do that. I need to be fully healed and restored and, and go out there and do the great things God has already set for me to do. Can you say amen? amen. Somebody say great things. Say great things. And so I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. People might walk up to you and say, so how are you looking today? You might tell them, handsome, they might laugh at you. <laughs> but go ahead and just say it by faith, hallelujah. <laughs> Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, praise his holy name. And so we, we, we went to Mark eleven twenty four. Can you jump there? Go to Mark eleven twenty four, and 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 here's what Mark eleven twenty four says. He says, "Therefore I say to you, who's he speaking to? Me. Turn to your neighbor and say, you. you. Therefore I say to you now. Now if you if you have a Bible, this scripture is marked in red. When something is marked in red like that, whether it's your phone, iPad, whatever, wherever your Bible is." It's because Jesus is speaking. Now, if you don't want to believe the word that Jesus speaks, that's between you and him. But I'm a little bit smarter. I might, I might be one sandwich short of a full picnic basket, but, but, but I'm not that dumb. I, I have enough sense to believe that if it's in red, oh my God, Jesus is speaking, then I better believe that. Hello? And, 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 and how many of you agree that that's in red in your Bibles. So Jesus says this, therefore I say to you, now where it says you, you want to learn how to personalize the word of God. So whenever you see the word you, you put your name there. Therefore I say to you, Charlie. Therefore I say to you, Sylvia. Therefore I say to you, Miguel. That's why I say to you, Julie. That's why I say to you, Charlene. Not, 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 not you, Ricky. But Charlene, that's why I say to you, Ricky. That's why I say uh, 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 to you, widow. That's why I say to all of you. Now you're personalizing it. Now it becomes a more real. So it says, therefore I say to you, Charlie Gallegos, whatever things you ask, when you pray, and we'll talk about the prayer of faith. It's part of my teaching. When you pray, it says what? It says what? Believe. believe that what? When I believe that I'm healed, I, I act as if God's word is true. Now my, my, my wife said, because she loves me, she said, Sunday, let me get somebody to preach for you. And I go, no. And she goes, never, huh? And I go, no. Why? Because I believe God's word is true. And I need to be at my post if I want to be a good leader and a good example. Now, there's times when you need to stay home and rest and recoup and God will speak to you and say, rest, I want to do things. But there's other times that you've just got to rise up and say, devil, no way. You ain't going to have my health and you're going to have my body. I've got a call on my life. I've got a purpose for my life. I have vision. i got to get to church. Besides, it's when I go to church that I receive strength from my brother and sisters. That's why you got to keep coming to church. People, when they don't feel, when they feel bad or, or, or they, 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 they're angry or they're having a bad day, the first thing they do is they don't come to church. And you don't realize that where two or three are gathered in the name of Jesus. So I need to come to church so my brethren can help strengthen me and help me continue to walk in my faith. But if I don't come to church and I stay there going, whoa, me, Whoa me, the devil's going to come in and he's going to make sure, whoa me, because now you've isolated yourself from, from, from those that love you and care for you and want to release their faith in agreement with you. Oh, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of God. But many of you stay away from the house of God. Whoa. Why didn't you go to church? Well, I just wasn't feeling it. 
Why didn't you go to church? I had a bad day at work. That's why you got to go to church. You must go to church. Stop being a half a week Christian. For many Christians, you know, you know how to spell weak? W-E-A-K, not W-E-E-K. You can't be a half-time Christian, someone said, and fight full-time devils. I don't know who put it on Facebook, but I, I took it, and now I'm telling you, let me share what God showed me. <laughs> through, through Facebook. But when I saw it, it's so true. There are so many, so many part-time Christians trying to fight full-time devils. And when they know they're part-time and they know that you're a full-time Christian, they'll come to you and ask you to fight. And you're not to. Because if you do, you are now enabling them in their weakness. And they're never going to learn, and they're never going to mature. I don't want to sound mean, but I'm telling you what's best for them is to say, no, that's a battle that you need to fight, and you need to learn how to fight it. You know how to fight it. You, you, and now get up and fight it. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Shout faith. faith. Shout faith. faith. Now it says... Therefore, I say to you, are you still happy? Yeah. Are you learning something? Yeah. Therefore, I say to you, Charlie, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. Now, if I believe something, I'm going to act accordingly. I'm not going to say I believe something and never act on it. I'm becoming, a, 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 I'm, a, I'm a hypocrite to some degree. But I, if, if I believe that I have received what I'm believing God for, then I'm going to put corresponding action to what I believe. Now, 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 many of you have been writing me all week because the Cowboys lost. All week, man, it's just like I'm, I'm open prey. But you, 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 listen, I'm only, I'm only going to say it one time. The Cowboys have never lost a game. We just keep running out of time. When you're a Cowboy fan, your team never loses. All those other jokers lose, but you're... Now, if I believe that, then I'm going to act according to that. So I'm still a Cowboy fan. I know it's... Funny, but it's a good example. When I believe that I have received something from God, then I'm going to act like it. I'm going to talk like it. The Bible talks about the faith of a child. Now you tell your little daughter, like I used Charlene. Charlene, one time I went to El Paso, her mom and I, and Charlene wanted a horse. I said, Charlene, what do you want me to bring you from Texas, from El Paso? Dad, bring me a horse. See, she was born in El Paso. But they keep telling her she wasn't. See? Those lying devils are still all around us. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I said, babe, what do you want? What do you want me to bring you from El Paso? She said, dad, bring me a horse. I said, okay. I'm going to bring you a horse. And so we went to El Paso. We came back. And said, dad, did you bring me a horse? Sure did. And I brought her a picture of a horse. I go, here you go. Now, if I believe, if I believe that, that, that I have received, that I have received what I'm believing God for, then I act like it. I talk like it. I live like it. I think like it. Because why? I believe it. The Bible says, the, talks about the faith of a child. You tell a child, you tell your daughter, I'm going to buy you a new dress. And they just believe you. They believe you so much 
that they go out and tell everybody, Mama's going to buy me a new dress. Well, how do you know? Because she said so. And the worst thing that you can do is give a child a promise like that and not keep your word. Well, I'm telling you, our God is not like that. If God gives you his word, then God is, oh, God, then God, God is going to keep his word because he's a good, good father and he is faithful to his promises. The promises of God, the Bible says, are yes and amen. You know what the word amen means? So be it. So when you say amen to something, you need to be careful what you amen to, by the way. Some of you just amen to amen. And say, hey, I've got a corn on my foot. Amen. <laughs> so you're shouting at me, so be it. Oh, it is. I see it. God's promises are yes and so be it. Now, the worst enemy to so be it, yes and amen. The worst enemy to the promises of God that are yes and amen, so be it, is not to act like it. The greatest enemy, I've taught you this, the greatest enemy to the faith of God and the word of God is failing to act as if God's word is true. Some of you fail to act today in your giving after the teaching. That's the enemy of faith. I'm not coming down on you. I'm the class teacher today, and when I know Johnny's not doing his homework, I'm going to tell Johnny, you're not doing your homework. You love your pastor? You did not act as if God's word was true. You believed it, you shouted, you sang it, but when it came to live by it and act on it, you did not do it. And you know every week we do this. There was no corresponding action to your faith. And real faith requires corresponding action. If, if you come up to me and, and you say, Pastor, can you pray for my shoulder? Will you stand in agreement with me for, for uh, the manifestation of God's healing? Absolutely. And I'll lay hands on you and, and, and pray with you for the healing of the shoulder. Now, then I'll tell you, now do something you were not able to do. So the corresponding action would be what? You move your shoulder. Oh, hallelujah. Man, the pain's gone. Yes, because you believed it by faith. You believed it so much, you put some action to your faith. And that's what it means. What time is it? That's what it means when it says the just shall live by that kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. So when I believe that I receive whatever I prayed for, then I know I'll have it. There is no doubt in my mind. I don't go around saying, well, you know, maybe I'll have it. I don't go around saying, well, you know, if it's God's will, he'll do it. No. If I believe I received it, then I speak according to what I believe. Because out of the abundance of the heart, man speaks. So if there's faith in the heart, you're going to speak. If there's doubt, you're going to speak that. I don't doubt God anymore. Because I believe that I've received them. Jesus said it. It's in red in my Bible. What an insult it would be to the Son of God that after he's done everything that he did for us on that cross, yet not to believe his word. And yet that's what he died for, that we would believe his word and receive it and be set free. So I be, if I uh, uh, believe that I've received them, I speak accordingly. I don't go around saying, man, I don't feel well. I go around saying, I'm healed by the stripes on the back of Jesus Christ. That's his word for me. I'm healed. When there's not enough finances, I don't care what it looks like. I, I, I say, I thank you that I've got more than enough. According to Ephesians 3.20, my God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that I ask or I think. That I believe that, I start acting like it, and I carry myself like it. I say, well, today, wasn't that a great healing service? Yeah. Did you, did you get healed? Well, I hope so. You didn't get healed. You didn't get healed at all. 
That's not a life of faith. And I'm not coming down on you. I'm just, I'm just trying to take you from this realm into the next realm. Are you still happy? You still love God? And so when I act that way, here's the reward. You will have them. Let me tell you something about having them. Right there and then, when you start believing God for breakthrough, mountains or problems or situations start popping up in your life. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever noticed that? Is verse 23 there? It should be. Trying to tell me what I didn't put in why I ought to. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I appreciate what you do, Debbie and the whole crew, don't you? <laughs> Believe me, this isn't easy. That's why nobody volunteers to work back there. We need volunteers back there, but no, everybody wants the easy. Never mind. Mark 11, 23. Now, now, when you start living by faith and believing God, then things start happening. Amen. Somebody say, just like the devil. Just like the devil. Amen. Say it again. And look at, what, look at what you need to do when that happens. For surely I say to you, Charlie, that whoever says to this mountain, the mountain is whatever thing has popped up. Whatever you say to it, you got to speak to it. The way you speak to your children sometimes. When they're not behaving. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, now, how many of you have a mountain before you right now? What is it? I did. Finances. Give me another one. Stand up. Whoever said finances, stand up. Stand up. Whoever said finances, give me another one. Huh? Health. Stand up. Stand up. Give me another one. What? Unemployment. Stand up. How about being ugly? Oh, no, there's nobody here like that. No, sit down, Andrew. Get down. <laughs> Those guys stand up. Great. And their father and son, by the way, stood up. It's a generational curse. <clears throat> I want to tell you something about Andrew's dad. Andrew's dad uh, has been a spiritual son of mine. He was on vacation for a while, but we all go on vacation. But now he's back on from vacation. All right, so you people that name those things, stand up, except the ugly stuff. I don't, stand up, finances, health, come on, unemployment. Somebody give me, give me another one. What is it? Can you? Children. You don't want no children. You want children right now? Get a niño de vera. Children, okay. Anybody else? Family. Family. Family? Stand up. Okay, now. Nicole, or not, not Nicole, Debbie. Yeah. What is your mountain? Finances. Finances. For surely I say to you, Debbie, whoever says to this mountain of finances, be removed and be cast into the sea, meaning out of the way, and does not doubt, and if you do not doubt in your heart, Debbie, but if you believe that those things that you say will be done, Debbie, you will have whatever you say. That's how you read that scripture. That's how you read that scripture. Now, Debbie, speak to that mountain of finances that commanded to move right now, real loud. You blew it, Debbie. We rehearsed this for a week and you still blew it. You did not learn your lines. How, how, how is Tiffany and Cheyenne going to act when they found out you blew your lines? You didn't even break a leg, not even a finger. You just blew it. I love you and I'm kidding. You know I'm kidding you. Messed up. Messed up. <laughs> Debbie, let me show you how to pray this. I 
Sit down, Debbie. Let me show you how to play, how to play this. Is it going to help you? Yeah. Are you going to do it? Yeah. It says this. Yeah. Debbie, I'm not Debbie, but say this. Everybody follow me. Say, I speak, I speak to this mountain of finances. Mountain of finances. And, in and in the name of Jesus, I command it to get out of the way. I, I believe with all my heart that I have what I just prayed. And because I believe that it is done. In the name of Jesus. I will have whatever I say. That's how you pray. Now look at me. Stand up you guys. I'm not done. She said you're next. Right away, who the teacher forgot about me. <laughs> Cecilia, you believe in God for for, 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 total healing. I mean, for, for healing and, and child support? No. <laughs> That's how rumors get started. Oh, pastor said about Sylvia. You want that you're believing God for the full manifestation of your healing. You do believe you're healed. Amen. So now you're believing, you're, you're believing God for the full manifestation. Listen, I'm, I'm still teaching. Okay. I'm still teaching. And that's what faith does. Faith re reaches into the supernatural and pulls into the natural what you're believing God for. Ah. Do you notice the pink lights for cancer awareness? Faith, faith reaches into, look at me, look at me. Faith reaches into the supernatural. That's where all your promises exist. And they've been there for over 2,000 years. It's just that people don't know how to, by faith, reach into that supernatural realm and pull it by faith and by your confession, by how you act and how much you believe in it, pull it into the realm of the natural and then you give glory to God when people say, wow, look at this. And you say, look at what God has done. Amen. So Nicole, you may sit down. Nicole, how would you pray that prayer? For sure, I say to you, Nicole. Yes. Say, amen. Say, Jesus, I believe what I've just spoken. I receive it. And I know that in your name, I will have whatsoever I say. Now listen to this. As long as it lines up with the word. That's why you've got to learn the word. That's why you've got to be in your word. You cannot Believe God for something, for a promise that is not in his word. You can't come in here and believe God for somebody else's wife. You can't come in here and believe, try to believe God for somebody else's husband. That's stupid. Turn to somebody that's stupid. It's not in the word of God. You got to, as long as it's in the word of God and it's a promise from God to you, then by faith, it is yours. But before you believe God, you got to make sure that what you're believing God for lines up with his word. That's why you got to be a student of the word. That's why a lot of people don't know the things that God has done for them. They're not in their word. They love God. They go to church. But they're not in their word. They go to church just to play games on the phone. 
And they, they get aggravated at the pastor, not at me, but at, 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 at those other pastors who say, please put your phone away. I'm about to teach you a word that'll bring breakthrough and miracle in your life. I'm not against you being on your phone. It's between your phone and the word of God. But I'll tell you what, Facebook ain't going to heal you. Snack Shack won't heal you. <laughs> Google eyes won't heal you either. It's the word of God. I said it's the word of God. And my time's up. Give the Lord a praise. I didn't get into my lesson, but guess what? There's going to be a part three of how does faith come? You were in the midst of it today. Faith comes by hearing. Can't miss church. You can't be a, a Wednesday church goer and not a Sunday. And you can't be a Sunday church goer and not a Wednesday. If you're a Sunday church goer, you can fight Sunday church going demons. But if you're not a Wednesday church goer, you can't fight a Wednesday church going demon because you're only a ch Sunday church goer. But if you go all the time and not forsake the fellowship of one another, together in agreement in the mighty name of Jesus, we can fight and defeat and continue to defeat everything that comes against us. Listen. Listen, you're not, you're not fighting for, for God to give you something. Everything, every spiritual blessing, every blessing you need has already been given to you. You know why you fight? I've taught this over and over. Can anybody tell me why you fight? Ah, see, you fight. Write this down. Write it down. You fight to keep what Jesus has already given you. You don't fight, you don't fight to get it. He's already given it. You fight to keep it. You need to write that down. It needs to sink in you so that you don't always have to fight the battle from a victim stand, standpoint. Listen. Did you know that this is a, the, the Bible says that, that this is a sword. Do you have your sword today? Raise it up. Whether it's your iPhone and, 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 and uh, it's because, you know, your iPad, all those are good. Say, this is my sword. But it is shameful. It is shameful. Oh, did you stop recording? Okay, good. Because this is important. Then you can stop. I love you, brother. Just appreciate you too. I don't care what Fred says about you. I do not listen to it. Neither do I Listen to me and I'll close with this. Say, this is a sword. Say it again. Say it like you mean it. This is my sword. Did you know it is shameful when you see somebody with a sword in their hand using it to, to, to hide behind instead of fighting with it? The challenge is to keep your sword sharpened. The word of God is sharper than two-edged sword. Some of you have a very dull sword that not even the cockroaches are afraid of you. Look, I got a sword. Yeah, but it ain't sharp. Huh? Well, demons are the same way. How do you, how do you sharpen your sword? You get in it. You read it. You study it. You believe it. that's your responsibility not mine I'm here to teach you how to do that but doing it is your responsibility quit hiding behind the sword you have the shield of faith to use to ward off the, the, the tactics of the enemy you use the shield of faith but you fight with the sword you don't hide behind it God didn't give you the, the word to hide behind 
God gave us a word to stay as more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. Give the Lord a praise. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I like to cough. <coughs> it's one of my things I enjoy doing. Let's stand. Let's stand. We had a lot of fun tonight, didn't we? Did you have fun tonight? Yeah. I feel I have a I appreciate everybody that comes to church, but I have this special appreciation for those that come on Wednesdays and then go to Bible studies to reach on Tuesdays and to Lydia, Pastor Lydia, because that shows me that. They really want to learn the word. But if you want to learn the word, which is phenomenal, also learn how to apply the word. And begin to say to yourself who God says you are. God doesn't say you're sick. The Bible says in this world, you will have tribulations. Can you say amen? It doesn't say because of God you will have tribulation. It doesn't say God will bring tribulation. The world will. But it doesn't matter. Jesus Christ has overcome the world. And how many of you born again? Then you are a world overcomer because of Christ Jesus. Oh, come on, church. You are a world overcomer. Grab your neighbor by the shoulder and say, I'm a world overcomer through Christ Jesus. Now, some of you, you talk, you talk loud but say nothing. You're out there going, in here I said, shake them and go, hey. Chavalas to the bone. Well, they don't say that no more. The just, those that have been forgiven, whose sins have been forgiven, those that know that before Christ they were going straight to hell, but now because of Christ in their life, heaven is their home. The just, that's all of us, isn't it? The just shall live. in every area of your life. And so from now on, there's no reason not to have your tithe. There's no reason not to have an offering, not to have seed. There's no reason anymore. For the just shall live by faith. And when they believe and live by faith, they put corresponding action. Even when I was in the neighborhood, you, 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 you had better back up what you said. Because if you did not back up what you said, you were a punk. Not anymore. I, I did. When, before Christ. Say before Christ. But even then we learned that. You better back up what you say, dude. If you can't back it up, man, don't say it. It's the same way in the things of God. You better back up what you say. We can, I got serious right away. Back up what you say. I believe God. I believe God. And so when you put corresponding action, lift your hands. Father, I, I believe that tonight you've spoken to, to all of us. I believe tonight your Holy Spirit was the teacher again, and we're so grateful. Father, I know that some people get offended, but, but Lord, you, you said in your word that that's what you came for.
to offend. Some will get offended by, by the truth of your word. But Lord, let no one believe that they were offended intentionally. But I pray, and I, I, I don't know, Lord, if this is the right way to pray, but I pray that if anybody here was offended, they get offended to the degree that they get back in their word. And they get back to the things of God that they once enjoyed. Get back to living for God. Like they once used to. Now Father, I pray that in the name of Jesus, somebody say in the name of Jesus. That you bless every household represented here. And I thank you that you're doing it even now. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said. And you may be seated a few important announcements and they will be dismissed.